Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is April 22nd, 2016. My name is Lynn Marquardt and I'm your host. Welcome to another Friday night of quilting and I have wanted to quilt all week. It's been a long week. I don't know how you're doing, but I'm glad you're here. So tonight we're going to be working on a Dear Jane block. It's called H8 Eaton's Crossroads. Don't know if you can see it there. Follow along if you have the Dear Jane book by Brenda. I can never say her last name. Papadakis. Papadakis. And again, this is Jane Stickle's quilt that she made in the 1800s, and we're making it one square at a time, and it's going to take years. And here are the blocks I have and my few triangles so far. And again, today we're going to dive right into this block. It always feels good to just finish it. So welcome. For anyone who's out there, this is not a training course. This is just all of us sewing together. And I understand we have people from around the world out there sewing. So welcome. Please do send me email and send me pictures of what you're working on at lmarquedant at gmail.com. I'll spell it L-M-A-R-Q-U-E-D-A-N-T at gmail.com. And as a co-worker said to me today at my regular job, he reminded me that tonight was Fibercast. So it, it, is, it is a happening, and I'm glad you're here. So I've already done a little bit of prep, including I have the Dear Jane software, and I love it. And I printed out the Eaton's Crossroads paper piecing blocks. It's lots of little pieces, and there's applique in the middle. And a lot of repetition on the paper piecing, so it shouldn't be that difficult. Little pieces. I wonder how many pieces there are total. I can count it later on. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units so far there. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and each of those, some of them have more pieces and others don't. So, let me just do one to get us in the mood, and again, I hold, oh, and I'm using this blue polka dot. I don't know if anyone recognizes this. This may have either come from Carrie or maybe from Linda. It was in the scrap bag, and I discovered there were pieces that were big enough to do one of these, and I thought that would be really fun. So that's, that's the blue, and now my white is the same white I've been using. I don't know why I have to do... Oh, yes, I do. No. Well, we're going to do it this way. And I'm going to do it this way. I don't know why I need multiple pieces of white. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. On this unit B, can you see how there are three pieces there? Why do I have to piece two white ones together? Why can't I just make that one? So that's what I'm doing in my head. And I'm going to try it, just doing it that way. And we'll see what happens. I think it will work just fine. So here. And then I put my right sides together, and I hold it up to the light to make sure that what I'm going to sew catches the seam. And I put down my seam to one and a half or so. And there we go. Okay. I'm still getting over a cold. How are, your, how are you all doing? Okay, I'm just going to kind of mis string piece. So here's another one here. There we go, that'll work. 
So speaking of Carrie, I want to say congratulations on your granddaughter. I hope it's a granddaughter. I think it is. And I love seeing that you had everyone, lots of kids at your house for school vacation. It sounded fun. That's something. What do we do before Facebook? I tell you, I didn't know my friends nearly as well, or my family, my cousins. I never would have known what they were doing day to day. Because we all get so busy, but it's so nice to see, like, I, ha I have a cousin down on the vineyard. I think I've mentioned him, Ben, and his wife, Nicole, and his two kids, Violet and Reed. They do all sorts of fun things, like they'll forage in the forest, and they'll enter competitions for making food out of what they forage. Or... They will grow chickens, raise chickens and the eggs. They were doing the honey last year. They, um, they're going to do it again, I think. The bees all died over the winter. It was tough on a lot of the bees. But I never would have really known that. And I love knowing that. I love hearing about all sorts of things that people share, including all of you. I love what you send me. And I want you to know that if I don't answer every email, just know that I do really appreciate it and love seeing it. And I know the other fiber casters, so I'm just going to keep doing this, right? Enjoy seeing it too. So, thank you. In fact, my sister, KB, you'll hear me talk about her. She's down, oh boy, I should know where, St. Lucia? And she's been online, and she has been sending pictures of where they've been going, and she's been looking at people's quilts, like Marquet's denim quilt. That's awesome. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's really cool to see. She has, uh, she made it out of the circles. You know, you just cut denim out of circles, and then you sew it into squares, so the back looks like squares, and the front looks like uh, is it paying Peter to pay Paul? Robin Peter to pay Paul? Okay. So I'm going to finish up these four, and then I'm going to see who's out there. Let's see if I... And I did want to take a minute to acknowledge what's been going on and to... to um, Say, I was very sorry to hear about Prince dying. 57 is not that old. And he certainly was a very, was a talent. I'll, I'll read a little bit about his life in a minute. My, before coming up here, I had dinner downstairs. It was delicious, by the way. I bought one of those pre-cooked chickens yesterday. And I, and I had this last night for dinner, too. And I put a big bed of greens, and then I cut off a hunk of the chicken. I cut it all up. And then I had sweet mustard um, and cheese and raisins on the salad. And it is delicious. Anyway, I was downstairs eating my dinner. And Bob was there with his bandmates. And he was remembering when he was a DJ in Boston in the 80s. And he said at that point, and he met Prince, and he said at that point Prince wasn't wearing much, I guess, when he would come to visit, and he literally showed up in a string bikini into the, the radio station, and he played, and then he, or he talked, and then he was playing somewhere that night, the Orpheum maybe. But he said he was a nice man. <laughs> we all have our memories, don't we? Okay, two more. Hmm. 
Again, when I do paper piecing, I use a lot of fabric. <laughs> oh, who's out there? It can't be Chris. She's in Guadalupe or Guadalupe, however you say it. But someone's out there. I heard it's raining in Northern California. I'm actually going out to Northern California on Monday. And hopefully it won't be raining by the time I get there. But it's much needed. So if it is, it is. Okay, this is the last one. I'm glad my machine is working too. It's been acting up. I'm having machine problems here. So literally, if I finger piece this, here's what each of the pieces looks like. Here's the back. I know it's hard to see. But after I check our mail, I'll come back and I'll cut that out and then I'll have several units. But let's see who's out there. It's always fun to see who's out there. So here's Prince. There he is. I'm reluctant to play any of his songs because you guys know what happens. The, the song police find me and they take down my video. So I won't play the song. Um, actually, while, while we're thinking of him and talking of him, I wanted to read you what CNN posted. This was earlier today. As stunned fans mourned legendary singer Prince, Oh, uh, let's see. No, no, no. Prince Rogers Nelson was his name. Oh, my goodness. Before I go any further, I just saw a text from Cindy. Oh, my goodness. Cindy says they are there at the Marathon Quilters Retreat. Hi. Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a great time. What are you all making? Send me pictures. And for everyone else out there, know that this is the Marathon Quilt Guild, the first guild I ever joined years and years ago. And I've been remiss. I haven't been attending as often as I should this year. And they are all having a stay retreat, which means that they have rented out or they've reserved a big room at the church. And they have at least, I think, three days where they're coming and sewing all day long and eating up a storm, I'm sure. Thanks, Cindy. I'm glad you're there. And we'll get back to Prince in a minute. I just caught, it's like a squirrel, right? It just caught my eye. And then I saw Carrie. <gasps> Carrie. So it is a baby girl, her granddaughter. Her name is Harper. Yes, after the author, she says, which we all have talked about before. Carrie says, and I'll show you pictures of her. Harper is now 16 days old, with both mom and baby doing well. She says, we are at the retreat having fun and sewing away, and yes, watching you on the double screens. Oh. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. We'll be here tomorrow, too. Miss you. Oh, thank you, Carrie. I miss you, too. Look at that cutie bug. That's Harper. Oh, she's beautiful. And I have another picture. Oh, look at her. Oh. Oh, that is a big, that's a present that's been a long time coming. Congratulations. Oh. Oh. I'm curious if you're getting much sleep. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Deb Linehan. Hi, Deb. Deb says, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, too. She says, no sewing for me this vacation. Chalk painted furniture for our screened porch. Excellent. You do. I love your chalk paintings. She says, I'm looking forward to our field trip on the 2nd. Maybe Carol can meet us. She lives close by, correct? That's a great idea. Carol, if you're out there on Spean Street. We're just going to go up the road a few miles. Deb and I will come pick you up. Let's go look at the Modern Quilt Guild. They have an exhibit 
down at the Fabric Place basement, which I've seen pictures, and Jean has said it was very nice, and Jen Sorensen, and, and they look great, and there's a sale on fabric. Deb, it's a plan. Send us pictures of what you're painting, too. Okay. Is it going to be purple? So I guess Prince liked purple. Again, Prince's name was Prince Rogers Nelson. He died Thursday, found unresponsive in an elevator at his studios in Chanhassen, Minnesota. That's where he was from from the beginning. He never strayed from there, even though he went around the world to entertain. Um, he was a favorite native son, and uh, he danced. Um, I've seen lots of tributes to him on uh, this morning's TV shows and probably tonight. So definitely try to listen for those because his music really was amazing. Uh, people are flocking to First Avenue in downtown Minneapolis, a dance club that became a landmark after Prince used it in the movie Purple Rain. Um, let's see. Prince's music, here's, here's a little bit more about his music. It transcended genres and generations. He defined the sound of the 80s with songs such as Kiss and Purple Rain. And he defied the music industry in a fight for creative freedom. Yeah, that, I think that's why I probably paid attention to him, aside from the fact that he only had one name, kind of like Cher. I could remember it more easily. <laughs> that's just between you and me. But aside from that, um, I liked that he had the he was creative and he was okay being creative and he was out there and he could be because why not? Anyway, let's see. Some said the icon's death is what it sounds like when doves cry. That's one of his lyrics, a reference to his monster hit from 1984. Okay. So even President Barack Obama weighed in. He said, as one of the most gifted and prolific musicians of our time, Prince did it all. He did funk, R&B, rock and roll. He was a virtuoso instrumentalist, a brilliant band leader, and electrifying performer. President Barack said in a statement, he's a strong spirit that transcends rules. Prince one set, and nobody's spirit was stronger, bolder, or more creative. Okay, so... We will remember him. Now, here I have this piece, and now I have to, I think I've done all my blue. Now I have to just trim it up. And this is when I just put all my scraps on the floor. It's easier that way. I think I've told you. Every Friday night, I look forward to this every Friday. And, you know, three and a half years, no, two and a half years, listen to me. Two and a half years into this Fibercast, I still want to do it. And it's because I just like to sew. It's what I, it's my hobby. So I love that. And I have to tell you, on Friday night after Fibercast, Nine times out of ten, I turn off Fibercast, click, I literally stand up, I turn off my machine, I turn off every light, and I go downstairs. And I usually have a bowl of ice cream, the truth be told. My mother knows that because we have had mint chocolate chip ice cream after Fibercast. And I come back up here on Saturday mornings, the place looks like a tornado has hit. I've got, you know, scraps everywhere. But that's what I do, is I just turn it off on Fridays after we play for an hour. And I just so love that you are all out there playing and making beautiful things. Oh, and speaking of, of prints, I have a, a purple quilt to share with you. See what I'm doing? So I'm just literally going through each one and cleaning it up. But I'll share with you this purple quilt.
and I believe Evelyn Moyer has sent us another picture. Her pictures are always stunning, whether it's of Morocco or of a cave quilt done. A Dear Jane made out of cave. So there's number two. Okay, let me find this picture of a prince quilt. Brenda in Kentucky. Hi. Brenda wasn't quite sure if she would be online with us. She may have to be out and watch later, but she sent today or late last night. She said, hi, Lynn. Not sure if I'll get to watch Fibercast on Friday. I'll watch later. She has her granddaughter's volleyball game to attend, but she wanted to share what she just finished tonight, and she sent this at 12.05 a.m. I always enjoy your Fibercast, says Brenda. On Instagram, and her tag is in stitches 17 she wrote, made a Prince Memorial block tonight. I'm currently, uh, let's see, oh, she, she was working on another design that she decided to make Prince inspired block, and she had the fabrics in her stash, and she had more paisley fabric than she realized, so of course they were included. She says, I love the black and gold musical score fabric. How appropriate for a musical legend. I absolutely had to include purple fabric with stars on it. No explanation needed there. The multicolor paisley fabric, top right picture with reds and purples, will appear only in this one block of the quilt as a tribute. I love the little purple paisley that is peeking out. Rest in peace, Prince, 42116. There we go. I love that paisley. Can you see that? Brenda, I love that. Imagine if he knew that he inspired you to do that. Love it. Thank you for sending that. And while I'm here, It's all Lynn's fault is the title of this email from Sharon. What must this be about? It says, it's all Lynn's fault, but there is a winking emoticon. It says, hi, Lynn. Because of watching you working on your Dear Jane quilt, I had to order my own book. Woo! It has arrived, and I can't wait to get started. It is nothing like I have ever worked on before. She says, do you have any advice before I start? It would be very much appreciated. She says she's interested in hearing how I pick my fabric for the project. She says she won't be catching us live because I'm on during Irish night Irish time, but she will watch us in the morning. Good. Take care, Lynn, and I hope you have a lovely weekend, Sharon. Oh, Sharon, what a nice note. Thank you. And by the time you're seeing this, it's Saturday morning. Um, and I love the, to be able to think about some advice for someone just embarking on Dear Jane. I consider myself a bit of a newbie. I definitely had to learn. Joyce Morganelli, who's also in our guild, was really instrumental early on. Well, there are a couple of people. So I guess my first thought is, if you have anyone around you that is also doing it with you, that's always really fun. You can learn from each other tips and tricks as you go along. For me, I was first introduced to it by Sarah Kokanowski. She had taken a class with Brenda who wrote this book and she literally had us over to her studio. <clears throat> it was once a week on Sundays, I think, to get us started back maybe in 2012, so four or five years ago. And that was fun just to get started. Um, and then later on, Joyce Morganelli, I saw her doing it at a retreat, and I noticed how precise her blocks came out. So I asked her for a lesson, and I learned some more things. So I'd say, number one, see if you can, if there are others around you that are doing it. Otherwise, that's okay. We'll do it together here, and we'll teach each other. We'll learn. Um, for me, 
it was not so important to go in I'm a, I'm a random type of quilter anyway, so it wasn't so important for me to plan every color choice. Instead, actually what I did was I looked through this book and I found one of the quilts in here that was a beachy theme and it inspired me. And that's kind of where I start when I'm picking my fabrics. And I will tell you what page it's on so you can see it. Part of me wishes I'd done the more traditional, just like Jane did, but in my next life I'll do that one. I love that I'm getting a lot of use out of this book, too. Okay, let's see, where is my inspiration beach quilt? So literally for me, it was more, I want, I saw something that is guiding me and it has blues and greens and yellows in it. And maybe the yellow is more sandy than anything. And then each week when I decide I'm going to work on Dear Jane, it's really a question of whatever color is near me. There's, that's the one that is is driving me to make decisions about my colors. This one is called Love at First Sight by Chiko Matsura, Kobe City, Japan. She made it in 1994. So, um, beyond that, some of the other things, so that's kind of my first inspiration, or my set, no, so that's my second tip. My first tip was find other people who are doing it and learn from them. My second tip was, and I'll tell you what I learned from Sarah and from Joyce in a minute. My second tip was find a color or a theme or a, a period of time that will drive your colors and stick to that. And then start to pick your colors and then you're going to learn which colors and size of prints work best. Like I discovered early on some of them were really light and didn't give me a lot of contrast like that. I might not pick that light blue again, but I'm going to keep it because my inspiration here actually has some very light blocks. Um, if it's going to have really small, small pieces, then I choose a print that has very small print motif on it. If you pick a print that has a big motif, like say this, Unless you fussy cut that, you could have a very errant looking block because you might get a square that had some green and blue and another square that had some yellow and you wouldn't get any good design. So again, smaller prints with smaller motifs on them I think work better for the most part. Uh, let me show you an exception. This one has clouds floating in the background. That's a pretty big motif, but that works okay. Uh, there's one here that I'm thinking of. Oh, how about one that we did just a few weeks ago? So this was reverse applique, and that was just that middle piece would not be good if I had to piece little pieces, but because it's one big piece and I really liked it, I could use it. Let's see. So, learn from others, and I'll tell you what I learned from Sarah and Joyce. Pick a theme, a motif, to drive your decisions about fabric. Once you've got that, when you're picking fabric, um, go for smaller designs. Start with easy blocks. Definitely start with those that have fewer pieces and um, what's a good one? Like A6, Uncle Homer, great one to begin with. Get your feet wet. Conversely, early on it might be a good idea to try a few really difficult ones when you have more patience. So it's all kind of what mood you're in. That's another big thing, definitely. If I've had a really challenging week at work, I'm going to pick something pretty... More, more easy than something more difficult. 
So I need to get moving. But Sharon, I'm so glad you're on board. And you'll see, search online for Dear Jane Quilts. You'll see every combination of them. And I'm curious what kind of quilts you have been working on. Have you been doing strip piecing? Have you been um, doing more uniform quilts? And you could also do that. I think it might get kind of boring. But you could literally pick... Oh, see, my, my unifying color is this light. You could pick a dark unifying color. Um, you could definitely pick a unifying color and a unifying matching color. So you could just do it in two colors. There are a lot of red and white Dear Jane quilts. And there probably are some that are using all the same red. Okay. So you'll see I just um, finger pressed a lot of those because I'm dilly-dallying a little bit here. I love it. It must be what, I shouldn't even say this after just saying goodbye to Prince, but this, <laughs> this must be what drug dealers feel like when you get another person, another customer. Not really. So, oh, update on the dolls. Last week, remember I made that second doll, and it really, they weren't finished. And they aren't finished now, but I've made good progress, and I've turned, actually, I switched heads on the dolls. And I think you're going to like what I did. One of the dolls with the wild hair, I've turned into a 1970s rock and roller. So she's got wild hair, she's got a big flowy shirt with tassels and, and bell-bottom pants. Then I took the original dress that I had made last week and several of you, and I think I had mentioned, said it looked like a flapper's dress and the comments were put uh, something around her neck, whether it's a long set of beads or, um, or a scarf. And so... I am in the process of, so I looked up 1920s, 1930s fashion, and I'm in the process of giving her a very short cut like Mary on Downton Abbey wore, and I'm literally going to put a headband, and she's going to have long beads, and the, the shoes are literally going to be what they wore in the 20s and 30s with the, the buckle at the top, and so... I'm hoping to have them done for you maybe next Friday night. Maybe. That could be a goal because by the time next Friday night comes, I will have been to California and back. And then the textile tarts, my doll making club is coming over here. And I know, Marathon Quilters, I know, I know I'm cheating on you. I'm just into these dolls right now, but I'll be back. Anyway, they're coming over, and we're going to make dolls for a few days. And so by Friday night, they will have been here on Friday during the day, just like our Marathon Quilters are over at the church right now. And uh, I'll see how much I can get done. So, I'm just cleaning these up. And after I finish cleaning these up, I'll lay it all out. And I'll show you I've already prepared my middle parts for the applique. There's another piece. I love this little circular thing that my sister gave me. Between that and my new green mat that my mother gave me for Christmas, I'm a happy girl. You know, there aren't the dents from my 20-year-old green mat here. It's great. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, and since we last saw you, we had the marathon here. Oh, I have to tell you about the beef brisket that Bob made. He he outdid himself. He's so funny. So last Saturday, is that right? No, Sunday. Sunday. Saturday he bought the beef brisket. Sunday he started up the smoker, basically his grill outside. And he put, Mom, you'll be happy that that little metal square thing you got him to put wood in to smoke, he used that. And he put that in, he put in some charcoal, then he put this little square metal thing, and then he, he wet some chips, wood chips, and he put them in there. And then he put his brisket over here, and he put drip pans of water underneath. And he did nine hours of smoking. So every hour or so, we'd have to go over and we'd have to, we literally had pliers, and we I'd hold the brisket off the grill, and he would stoke the fire and put more wood chips in and yada 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 and we were both working outside working on the lawn and it was fun and it smelled good so then that was that was Sunday and then he took it off and he brought it inside and we were going uptown to the marathon party Sunday night and he had made a lasagna to bring to that so we weren't bringing the brisket that was for Monday for the day so before we left, he popped the brisket in the oven and put it on like 190. And all the time we were uptown on Sunday night, he was worried about drying out his brisket. So we rushed home, quarter to nine or something. He pulls it out, and the brisket, sure enough, was a little bit dry. So I kid you not, he spent, I don't know, 50 minutes creating this concoction of apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, maple syrup, all different types of things, root beer, root beer, to put the brisket in on a pan. And then he literally wrapped it in tin foil and then wrapped it in saran wrap and then put it in the oven overnight. He didn't have the oven on. He just left it there. Then the next morning, he took off the saran wrap and he turned on the oven again for several hours while he went up to watch the race. He watched our niece take off, who finished the marathon, by the way. Holly Marquardt, congratulations. And then he came back at around 1 o'clock, and he picked up his brisket, and he left me a little piece because I was working. Left me a little piece. And he went up. It was the most delicious piece of meat I think I've ever had. It was divine. I can't believe it even existed after all of that time, but it did. Ugh. That was a long story about one piece of food. Okay, back to Eaton's Crossroads. So here we have a middle square. Can you see this? Okay, I'm going to try and lay this out for you. I love quilting. I hope, I hope, I hope. Let's see, one, two, I don't have any idea how to lay this out. <laughs> this is going to be tricky. Because there are other pieces here, which are corners. Which will go on the outside, so I'm not worried about that. In fact, I can make those right now. Oh, Sharon, that's another thing. Get the amount of background fabric and then like double it just in case. Because hopefully you'll like the background fabric and if you don't need it, you'll have it for something else. But if you do need it because you use huge pieces like I do, I think you'll be glad you have it. Okay, so 
What? Oh boy. Well, this is not good. Oh, what it is. This is like a puzzle. I hope you all can see this. Okay, it's coming together. So I've made these little um, kites or butterflies. So you know what? That's what I'm going to sew together next. Oh, and the seams are nice and nest. So this will should work well. Again, when I get to this point, and I'm sewing on the line, I'm sewing a hair over from the line. I'll show you what I mean. The line right here says to sew. Instead of sewing right on the line, I'm sewing one hair down or one thread length down so that I can fold it open. So, after I do these four, I'm going to check and see who's out there. I bet Linda has made some yummy food at the retreat. And I bet Kelsey, did I see Kelsey in the picture? Hi, Kels. And I think I saw Dawn, our award-winning author of 300 quilt tips. If you haven't bought it yet, buy it on Amazon. Dawn Stewart is her name. Best-selling quilt book. Okay, there's four. And I saw Cindy, and I saw Carrie, and I saw Linda. Who am I missing? Is Joyce there? Okay. So, this is where it oh, starts to get fun. Didn't match up beautifully, but close enough. That one's much better. Perfect. Two. Perfect. Okay, so three out of four matched. Okay, so now what we do is... I'm going to take these, see these, these I'm going to applique on afterwards. Can you see that? And maybe what I'll do is while I have it right here, I'm going to baste it on with my needle. Why not? I've discovered I like these very long needles. They're called Milner's Needles. And I definitely like the John. They're in the yellow package. Does anyone know what those the name of those are? <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> I just saw 
Jean says they want the applause effect. You crack me up. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> Let me do something applause worthy. But I'll applause for you, actually. Crack me up. Let me just finish this. Oops. Okay, that's all literally I'm going to do so that they're, see that? Okay, let's see. Have to get a good, oh, oh brother. Hang on. Well, that's not working. Hang on. <laughs> so, there is the pieces that are basted. Now, let's put, now I'm going to sew these on. It wasn't very loud. I hope you guys heard it. So I literally, there's the first piece. I'm just going to go around. I'll do the other end. that. Now while we're on a roll, let me do the other two. Hmm. Now this, Joyce would definitely, both Joyce and Sarah would tell me to pin. So I'm going to pin. Very cool. Third. I don't know about you guys, but it is amazing what we get done in 60 minutes. You add all these little 60 minutes add up. So there is the third one. Again, I'm going to pin it. Pin and pin. So how funny is it that someone I work with at a computer company knows that at night I do a sewing webcast? Isn't that funny? I was stunned when he said it. 
I had no idea. Okay, so there is. We're <laughs> Doesn't sound loud enough. Clapping isn't loud enough. Who's out there? I think I heard some dings. Let me see if I can pull it up on this bigger screen. <laughs> oh, Pam's there. So. Okay, so the message came in from Jean that said, we want to hear the applause song, applause song effect. And she says, hi, from Carrie, Linda, Cindy, Kelsey, Jean, Joyce, Donna, and Pam. Hi. Oh, and did you see what I put on my head? That's another Google effect. It's a crown, but you can't really see it because it blends in with the background. So let's see. That's when This one always is a good look. Maybe that'll work. It takes a while to come in. The half. Okay. Deb. Oh. Hey, hey. Oh, my. That is like in a book. That's like in a magazine. Everyone, Deb has been working on her porch that's out back. Look at this. Look at that furniture and those. And she said she made the pillows. Oh, Deb, it looks beautiful. I love the colors. Oh, and look at the forsythia. Oh. And of course, there's a pool out back here too. The, oh, look at this panoramic view. You must spend all of your time there. Deb, that's really nice. <laughs> and hasn't the weather just been beautiful? Oh, that is lovely. Oh, I'm inspired. Okay. So. Let's see who's out there. Oh, Patty. Oh, Patty. <gasps> Patty from down in Texas. Oh, my hat came on. Remember the hat? What do you think? <laughs> It's a Google effect. Okay, Patty says, hope this time the picture makes it. This is still what's under my needle. I've made good progress. I'm on my last border. Pictured are my finger thimbles. Have a great show, and I'll catch you later, Patty in Texas. Ooh, I love your finger thimbles. And I love your quilt. And it did come out. This is Patty's bow tie quilt. I don't know if you can see it, but she has bow ties up there. All by hand. Your quilting is beautiful. Happy spring down in Texas. Oh, and Cindy. Cindy is working on a noodle quilt. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, Cindy, I like where you've taken that. I really like that. That started out just very noodly and straight, and you've cut it up and rejiggered it. I'm liking it. Very nice. Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. She says it's Stephanie Elsing. Just watching after a crazy day. Oh, I hear you, Steph. Don't you wish we were back in Missouri? Thanks for joining. I'm glad you're there. Aw, and Sue Norton is out there. She says, hi. <laughs> she says, hi. She's calling it QQ. That's how she's titled the email. QQ. Hi. My name is Sue Norton, and I'm a quiltaholic. That's, how she, that's what she started. She says, hi, Lynn. Glad you are working on Dear Jane. I took the day off from work to quilt. Oh, that's awesome. I finished three blocks. I wish I could take every Friday off. Wouldn't that be great? I'd even work 10-hour days for four days. I really would. Anyway, she says she's watching tonight. Oh, and she has 47 blocks done. That's great, Sue. 
Wow, you just recently started. That's awesome. Joyce Long, she says, hi to Lynn and the Fibercasters, just watching on this rainy evening. Again, thanks for Fibercast. I love watching every Friday. Well, thank you for joining. I love that you're there. Gay, hi Gay. She says, hi Lynn and everyone, working on my two-year-old great nephew's quilt. Hope to send pictures next week. Have a great week and to all. Well, we will look forward to that, Gay. This hat. Let's see. <laughs> As if I didn't have glasses enough, right? Just what I needed. Okay. But I'm boom. All right. Let's see what else is on. And then I will take the special effects off. Sue, okay, Sue said she forgot to post the pictures of her blocks today. Oh my goodness. Sue, they keep growing every year. That is great. To tell you the truth, folks, I don't know how to turn these um, effects off. Markay, oh, Abby's with you too. Markay says, Fibercast, me, and Abby. She says, hello, Lynn and the gang. I hope everyone is having a great Friday. She says, I'm writing early tonight because my email seems to always take so long to arrive. It totally does. It totally does. All right, I have to take these effects off. I can't see you. <laughs> off, okay, that's how I do it. It's just a toggle. Huh, you're back. Hi. Okay, so I can show Marquez pictures. She says, I've made progress on my veteran's lap quilt and wanted to share a photo. She says, I also wanted to remind you that little Abby is here with me and will be watching you tonight together. Oh, I told you, I told her you would wave and say hello to her. Hi, Abby. Here's a photo of my progress so far. The block I got in the swap and Abby with the seven puppies that my sister brought up tonight. <gasps> She is selling them tomorrow, part black lab and part German police. They are gorgeous. Well, have a good weekend, your sewing buddy, Mark A. and Abby. <gasps> Look at this. So the top is Mark A's veteran's quilt that's made out of the denim I mentioned. Mark A's doing a swap, and that's the first swap she got back. And there's Abby with the puppies. And let's see if I tap it. Oh, oh, Abby, those puppies look so fun. Oh, oh, and they're so black. Oh, that's great. Ding. Hi, Maureen in Pennsylvania. Just wanted to thank you. Thank you and the many fiber casters who offered suggestions on how to get out of my quilting funk. Great show, Lynn Maureen from Pennsylvania. Oh, I'm so glad. Yay. You go, girl. And I'm, sh that's awesome. Wendy. Hi. She says, hello, Lynn and everyone out there. Not going to see this live again. Oh, neat. Um, we have possible buyers coming to look at our property, so all fingers crossed for sea change soon. My fingers are crossed for you. My toes are crossed. I've been sewing, though, making this little quilt, fox quilt for my granddaughter Olivia's birthday in May. It's been a fun block, quick and easy. I've also bought everything I need to make an amaragumi, amagurimi fox to put on the new quilt. I love that. Remember we made those earlier, the crocheted animals, the fun animals? That's awesome. Hope everyone enjoys Anzac Day, another day-long weekend and gets to do something fun or just relax. Wendy in Australia. Oh, is Anzac Day a special day down there? I've not heard of that yet. Oh, I love that. Look at you. Oh, and this is an Elizabeth Hartman pattern. Really beautifully done. I like that a lot. I like the digital design or the simplicity of the design. And again, it's, it's a pattern by Elizabeth Hartman. Oh, send us a picture of the, the animal you make. And finally, Carol Bell, hi. 
She says, hope you and the Fibercasters have a great week, have had a great week. I'm still working on star blocks. I seem to have spent most of the last week squaring up half square triangles. Oh, I've been there. Carol in Ork Yorkshire, England. Oh, and you have, you've sewn them together. Very nice. Look at you. Very nicely done. All your points are beautiful. Oh, well, I can't believe how fast that hour went. It's amazing what we get done. Let me see if let me see if I can at least iron this and sew on the four corners. Well, the four corners will be tiny, but I can do that. It'll take me two more minutes. Oh, I just love that you're all out there and you're being creative or you're resting up, you're planning for tomorrow, confirmations are starting. The fall, of course, is coming down in Australia. I'll square this up. Oh, and you know, we also have to write in our diary. Every time I make one of these, I write in the book. And then we'll do one more. So again, next week will be another doll week. So keep on. Um, I hope you keep indulging me in the doll fantasy. It really is fun, and I'm thrilled to hear like you're making the fox out of crochet. Okay. So that looks like a mess. Let me just square it up for you, and then I'm going to bid you all adieu. I definitely, having the marathon quilters out there has made my night. You guys are amazing. And by next week, I will have sewn these on and will give it a good press. All right. So with this, this is Eaton's Crossroad, block H8. Thank you so much for joining me here on Fibercast. I really have enjoyed my hour. I hope you have too. Please come back next Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And join me again, and we'll see what we can do together. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. That's for you, Jim.